Justice Sewing makes a decision about where he's going to play college basketball next season. How does his decision affect or impact the Ohio State basketball team? And Kyle McCord has some interesting thoughts about transferring all that and more right here on Locked on Buckeyes. You are Locked on Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked On Buckeyes, part of Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is a Friday, April 8th in the year 2022, and I want to thank you for making Locked On Buckeyes your first listen or first watch of every single day. Justice Suing only played two games last year for Ohio State. He had to sit and watch the rest of the games from the sidelines. But as he was thinking, he decided he wanted to play college basketball one more time. And he basically told Chris, Chris Holtman, hey, coach, run that back. But this time, I'm going to join you for all the fun. Justice Suing is going to stay in Columbus, and I cannot be happier for this young man and for Chris Holtman and for his teammates for what's about to happen next year with this team. This is amazing. I have been wanting Justice Sewing to be on the basketball court for a very long time, not just for what can happen on the court with him there, but mainly because for his own mentals, him as a player, him as a person, him as an athlete, you want an athlete to compete. You want an athlete on the court, in the on the field, in the pool, on the diamond, whatever sport they're playing or participating in, you want that athlete to be able to compete at the highest level that they can. Justice Sewing couldn't do that last year. He had an abdomen injury that which lingered and came from and started more so in the previous season. All offseason, things looked well. I believe it started to be get uh, aggravated during a scrimmage that really wasn't publicized against Ole Miss prior to this past season getting started. Played a couple games. That was all she wrote for Justice, Justice Suing during this last year. Justice Suing in his most recent full season that he played college basketball in 2020-2021. That season was also his first year at Ohio State being able to play. He transferred after playing two years at Cal, 2017-2018 season, 2018-2019 season. 2019-2020, he, he had to redshirt. He had to sit out because the one-time immediate transfer rule was not in place. Justice Suing in his last year that he played a couple years ago, he averaged 10.7 points per game, 5.5 rebounds a game, uh, 1, 1. 1.5 assists per game. He shot 49% from the field, and he shot 54% from two. Not really a three-point shooter, but he really did a lot of his uh, damage from the mid-range. He does have a three-point shot he can make. Shot 36% 36 from three, but he does a lot of his damage from in the paint, mid-range, uh, 15 to 18 feet on end. That's really where Justice Suing is going to flourish. It's where his bread and butter is. And I look at this roster, think about Justice Suing and just the leadership aspect that he brings to Ohio State. The ability for him to be very familiar with Chris Holtman and what Chris Holtman wants from his players. This team is going to have numerous, well, I believe five freshmen on the squad. They're also going to have uh, at least one transfer in Tanner Holden. Let me see. I'm going to put him back here because I'm going to do a little something else later in the show where I need the list about what's going to happen with this basketball team. But you're going to add Tanner Holden, who is a transfer from Wright State. He's played college basketball. He knows how to play college basketball. But going from a mid-major to a high-level Division I program, it's a different animal. Justice Suing's leadership ability can help out with that. Also, I mentioned the five freshmen, but those things are key. You're going to have five guys that are coming that are coming in. Some are going to be thrust right into playing and thrust right into the rotation. Some might even start. And just as something is going to be needed for them to be able to lean on him so that they can be the best they can be in their first year at Ohio State. Oh, let's add in Kalen Etzler, who 
redshirted last year, who didn't get the didn't play a game last year, just like Justice. Well, Justice Swing only played two of whatever Ohio State get, played, however many games they played, thirty plus games, only played in two games. But he knows Chris Holtman. He knows the Buckeye way. He knows what Ohio State basketball is all about. He knows that what has happened is not acceptable. So he can help with the leadership ability with the youngsters. He can help guys like Michi Johnson, Zed Key, Eugene Brown the third. He can help with those guys as well. Let's just say Malachi Branham decides to return to school. That's another player that Justice Suing can help. And that leadership quality that he's going to bring to Columbus, or that's already going to be there in Columbus, him being familiar with Chris Holtman, him knowing the program, him knowing the ins and outs, the day-by-day operation, the to-do list while you're in practice, um, knowing the um, um, the agenda, I cannot think, the schedule, that's the word. I've been thinking of schedule for about 15 seconds, and that word could not come to my mind. But Justice Suing's ability to be a big piece on offense, a big piece on defense, if somebody with this team, this team's going to need a leader. You're losing potentially nine guys. You're not losing nine guys now, but you're losing a lot of key guys. Liddell is gone. Arns is gone. Uh, uh, Kyle Young is gone. You're losing a lot of guys that were big pieces of the pie, and Justice Suing can still be a big piece of the pie as he assists the young men, the young athletes at Ohio State, as him, Chris Holtman, the other coaches, and the other leaders on the team help this team be everything that it can be not just the Justice Suing's leadership ability and quality that's coming back, but literally for this man's mentals, I am happy. As someone that used to play competitively, play high school football, play a lot of rec league ball, rec league soccer, um, basketball, I might tell you a story or two about baseball. Your boy is not good at baseball, but those stories might come up very, very soon. As baseball's underway, the Cubs got their first one of the season. I am very excited about that. But as we all know, if you can't play a sport that you love, mentally it might mess you up. And I know Justin Suing wants to play college basketball. He wanted to play last year with his boys. I'm glad he can play again. I'm glad he can get back on that court. I'm glad he can put on that Buckeye jersey once again. And you know what? I'm also glad that this team has a guy that could be a leader. Now, I don't think Justin Suing's going to score 20 points a game. But if he, if he gives you 15 points, six or seven rebounds, that's a plus. Why? Because they ain't getting nowhere close to that this past season because that abdomen injury kept them out who basically all year long. With Justice Suing returning to the basketball team, it makes me start to think and wonder what piece or piece is are missing from the current basketball roster. I have a list here. I have broken them down by the five positions on the basketball court. Point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and center. You're going to see that one position has more players than the others. One position is something that you can concretely say Ohio State is going to be good at X position, Y position. Based off the numbers they have there now, based off productivity of things that have happened previously, <clears throat> you might be saying, Jay, I don't see what you're seeing. I We are not on the same page. What's going on here with Justice Suing? That's great. He's back. But where are the points going to come from? Is it going to be a team that's more like a John Calipari Kentucky team where it's one and done players where you have guys that are coming in basically knowing they're going to be there from the summertime when practice starts all the way through, let's say, March, and then you're done? Ain't going to no more classes. They're going straight to the league. Is that what's going to happen at Ohio State where it becomes a one-and-done factory? I don't know. We got to wait and see what Malachi Branham does. Chris Holtman's never had a one-and-done. So I don't know what's going to happen there. But as I look at this roster, we're going to go position by position and look at certain things. I know that sometimes in basketball nowadays, you're going to have positionless basketball where you're not really going to have a point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, or center. You may have three guards and two forwards. See that, see that a lot in college. You may have a four-guard set and a, and a small forward playing center or a power forward playing center. You, we see the Golden State Warriors all the time, but sometimes their, their death lineup is Draymond Green. Well, the old school, Draymond Green was playing center. That, that happened. So bear with me. The reasons why I'm doing this, it's a Big Ten country, a Big Ten basketball squad. You need, you need a center. 
hopefully a center that's not your typical Big Ten big man, one that can play different brands of basketball. But with this roster, point guard-wise, currently constructed with this team, um, I'm not including Seth Towns. I'm not including Malachi Branham. Branham can't come back. Seth Towns can't come back. I'm not including them in this example. Point guards, Michi Johnson and Bruce Thornton. Bruce Thornton is a true freshman. Michi Johnson is entering technically his third year at Ohio State, but it'll only be his sophomore season, um, technically because his first year did not count due to the COVID, and he entered, he entered the season uh, late, joined the team in December, and Chris Holtman already knew. If he comes in early, it's they're only getting an early jump and an early look at him getting at Ohio State. But these are two guys that really don't have much productivity. Bruce Thornton, he's a freshman. He'll be a true freshman. Will he start? Will he not start? That's to be determined. Michi Johnson, I have not seen a lot of things from him consistently that I like. Now, I do see some things I like from him, but consistent play? Man, he plays like a guy that's raw. He plays like a guy that needs to be corralled and settled down. Man, that ball handling, man. Tighten that bad boy up. There's so many times I see Michi Johnson dri dri dribbling the ball and loose, get stolen. But those are your point guards right now. Michi Johnson and Bruce Thor didn't mean to go on that little um, little short trail about Michi, but those are the things that come to my mind when I think about Michi Johnson playing the basketball. Shooting guard. You got four guys here. Tanner Holden is a newcomer. He's a right state guard that transferred to Ohio State less than a week ago. About a, about a week ago, you have um, Bowen Hardman, 6'3", 100, six foot three, with 160 pounds shooting guard. He'll be a true freshman, along with Roddy Gale Jr., 6'4", 195 shooting guard. Both of them will be true freshmen. And then Eugene Brown the third, 6'6", 195. Got a few games start, starting this past year, but you get a, you, you see a trend. Small forward. I got three guys here. Bryce Sensabaugh, 6'6", 240. Technically, I think Bryce Sensabaugh might move to the power forward position. So for this exercise, I'll put him at power forward because he might be a little stretched forward. So two small forwards. Kalen Etzler, 6'8", 200 pounds. He redshirted last year. Has not played a second of Buckeye basketball. And then Justice Suing, just talked about him about seven minutes seven minutes ago, uh, for about seven minutes about his decision to return. That's the one key piece. You see production from there, but there's a lack of production at every other position outside of Tanner Holden. So Tanner Holden, just as soon, you've got point guys that can score the basketball, but there's a lot of youth here. Center position. Bryce sends the ball 6'6", six, six, 240. I'll put him at power forward. I would like, for my own liking, a little bit more height at that power forward position. Um... You're basically getting another guy that's just like EJ Liddell, 6'6", 240, a little undersized, undersized height-wise. However, he, he can he'll be able to do other things that will compensate for its lack of height at that position. Center, 6'8", 245 pounds at key, 6'11", 210 pound Felix Akpera. Now, Akpera, I do think will be a center, not a stretch four. However... Akpera is skinny. Now, if you watched the NCAA tournament, you saw a skinny kid, a toothpick, a thin-railed kid from Gonzaga, Chet Holmgren, potential top three NBA draft pick in the upcoming NBA draft. Felix Akpera ain't that skinny. Mm -mm -mm. No, 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 no. He ain't that skinny, but that boy's still skinny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is still skinny. But you're seeing a trend here. I went through all that for this exercise to kind of go through the youth that Ohio State has currently on their basketball roster. I would love to see an addition at a few in a few areas. Another wing player. Now, my thing with Kalen Edsler is, if he bulks up, adds a little bit of weight, gets some quickness, and bulks up, I think he could be a rotation piece this year. A seven-man, eight-man off the bench um, in the rotation. Uh, take a third man, excuse me, off the bench, seventh or eighth man into the game playing. I do personally think that Kalen Edsler can have a face on this team. But he has to prove it in practice. He has to show us that. I just don't, I can't say it right now. Because I just, I haven't seen the guy play college basketball. I've only seen Kalen Edsler play high school ball. Film on the YouTube. That's all I have seen. 
And so I can't, you guys know how I roll. I can't come out here and say, oh, Kalen Esso is going to average 10 points a game this year, uh, three assists, who's going to shoot 45% from three. Your boy is not doing that. Your boy is not going out on a limb going and making that statement. I, I'll go out on a limb and say Justin Suing will probably average 15 to 17 points a game this year. I will say that. I will go out on a limb and say Tanner Holden will probably score 10 to 12 points a game this upcoming year. Why? We have game film on them in college. I have no idea how Kalen Edsler will adjust to the college basketball game. However, I would love to see her added, uh, Ohio State at a point guard. I would love to see Ohio State add um, a big man, stretch four or a five, one of the two or both. I think a point guard will be needed because I don't know how much Chris Holman wants to trust a freshman point guard to have the ball consistently. I personally don't think he's going to trust Michi Johnson um, with the basketball much right now, but that could change. You all know where my heart is, where my mind is. Go get Nigel Pack. The man just went to visit Purdue. He's an Indiana kid. I know Chris Holman is currently looking at an Indiana kid and Xavier Booker from Cathedral. Get to see him play a little bit this past year, a couple games. That young man is a guy that I want at Ohio State. I want him at Ohio State so I can watch his every game to see how he plays. I would love to cover him in college. I would love that thing. You get a point guard, preferably somebody that's a good lead guard that can put the ball in the basket as well, as well as orchestrating the offense. Get you another wing, get you a four or a five. I will love a five. I don't trust Zed Key. I don't trust Felix Acapera right now. Get you a five and then work on that four position consistently. Get it fast. Now, I get it. You may say, Jay, scholarship numbers. Will it be able to fit? Will it be able to work? We'll figure all that stuff out down the road. But Ohio State needs a point guard. Ohio State needs another forward, preferably a big body forward, and they need a center. I don't think Key and Akira are the guys you want to go into battle with for 30 games next year. Could be wrong. This is April the 8th, a long time between now and the start of the next season. However, from what I have seen, get somebody else there. That's all I'm going to say. Let's go to the football. I know the spring game's coming up. I just actually recently uh, bought my spring, bought the ticket to go to the spring game. So if any of you are going to be there, feel free to DM me on Twitter or Instagram. The handle is the same for both apps, at jstevens07. If you want to email me, jstevens317 at gmail.com. I love to connect with you, see you, say hi, take a picture. It don't really matter to me. Get to know you, uh, say whatever opinions that you have about the things that are on the show. I would love to meet everybody. I'll be there. Um, just bought actually bought a new hoodie for that as well. I haven't bought a, I, I try to buy some Ohio State stuff every now and then every football season. Just now it's coming in, coming in the spring and not in the fall. So if you're going to the spring game, Great. Drop a comment in the comment section on YouTube. Locked on Buckeyes on YouTube. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Big things coming once we hit 1,000 subscriptions. The deadline to hit that. The goal is by the start of the 2022 NFL Draft, which is at the end of the month. Kyle Young is a player that in today's climate of college football, you are going to be looking at players and saying, mm, that position is loaded. We hear it all the time. Ohio State's wide receiver room is loaded. The running back room is loaded. The defensive line room is loaded. People just say that sometimes, and they don't really know what they're saying. However, there is truth to some things that I just said. The running back room is loaded. It just doesn't get talked about a lot. Wide receiver room is loaded. It gets talked about all the time. The QB room is loaded. Devin Brown's a dog. There are things you talk about all the time about things being loaded. And Ohio State's quarterback room is immensely, immensely talented. From C.J. Stroud to Kyle McCord, Devin Brown, you have or you had Jack Miller, the third transfer. Quinn Ewers went back home to Texas. He transferred. Some of you may still think that he used Ohio State for the leverage to get some money. And no one along he was going to go to Texas and play at the school in the state that he is from. Okay, whatever. Those kids transfer. And Kyle McCord is someone that people are looking at and saying, hey, man, Devin Brown behind you. And he, he, he a dog. Uh, you all know how Jay feels about the stars. Devin Brown only has four stars by his name. I don't understand that because I am on the record of saying it 
previously. I'll say it again. Devin Brown showed me better stuff in high school than Quinn Ewers did. I don't care if Quinn Ewers has this five-star next to his name. That means nothing to me. My eyeballs, and I guarantee your eyeballs will as well, will show you Devin Brown has something with that ball in his hand that makes him special, regardless of how many stars he has or he does not have. Devin Brown, you can be Devin Brown over Quinn Ewers every day of the week in high school. I cannot wait to see what they do in college, both Quinn Ewers and Devin Brown. With the current climate of college football, people might think, hey, you got to do behind you. That's a dog. You, you going to transfer? Hey, man, he, he is, he's doing some special things. Are you going to transfer? Are you going to be a player that's going to be just backing away from competition because of someone behind you trying to take your spots? Or are you going to transfer? This is not a knock against Legend Cavazzo, Bryson Strong, any of the guys that have transferred recently. Just in ours at all. Sometimes you're able to hop into the portal, find a better spot, find a spot perfect for you, and go forward with it. Sometimes things just don't work out, and you're like seven banks, and, well, you might not find a landing spot because, well, you're, one, unfortunately injured, and you kind of said some things that made people think you were going to a place that you're not going right now. And, man, the grass is not what you thought it was going to be on the other side. Kyle McCord doesn't really think the request and the thought of him transferring because of what's happening behind him is wise or that it should be there. And here's what he had to say about transferring, the thought of transferring because of who is behind him. Quote, it's ridiculous. I mean, especially now with the transfer portal, I feel like if something isn't going the way a guy expected it to, fans and even the player might think, I can just put my name in the portal and change a situation like that. But I think you just have to see the bigger picture of it. I mean, what more could I want being at a school like this, getting coached to buy the best coaches in the world? So I didn't really even think about it at all, to be honest. And I think you just got to see the bigger picture. I mean, yeah, do I want to play this year? Of course. But I think you got to look at it from a long-term perspective, end quote. What a mature statement response in regards to the transfer portal, his current situation at Ohio State, and really just him and letting everybody know, I'm a competitor. I ain't backing down from nothing. I am here to compete. I'm here to get better. I'm here to be coached hard. Co I'm here to be coached really hard. And I am here to be the best quarterback I can be at the Ohio State University. We have seen it at Ohio State. We've seen it all around the landscape of not just college football, but collegiate sports as a whole. We have seen numerous people hop into the portal when they shouldn't have gone to the portal. They should have stayed right where they are. They should have been perfectly fine competing and getting better because, well, that's what was needed of them. Now, I'm trying to go to the Twitter right now and look at a recent retweet that I had talking about the transfer portal and how many athletes not – this is not a sport that is college football. This is college basketball, women's college basketball. This tweet came from Chantel Jennings. Chantel Jennings covers women's college basketball or women's basketball – excuse me, for The Athletic. She wrote this tweet yesterday. It was really eye-popping. There are currently 1,084 women's basketball players in the transfer portal. This tweet came at 2.48 p.m. on, oh, this is actually on, on a Wednesday when the tweet came out, so it's a couple days ago. 1,084 people. Now, there could be more, there could be less, but it's about 1,000. I heard there's about 1,000 college football a um, little above, a little bit low, college basketball, 1,000, 1,000 in football, basketball. I heard at one point there were 1,000 in women's volleyball. I'm like, what is going on? Giving people what they want is not always the best idea. The NCAA decided the one-time transfer is here. You guys keep pushing. You guys keep pushing. You guys keep pushing. So here you go. You get to transfer immediately one time. And now we all saw, saw with Paula EA now OT, OT, the USC transfer, the NCAA might not immediately grant you the ability to transfer and play immediately. You can transfer. But getting on the field immediately, that might not be an option. So what are we doing? What are we doing? 
The NCAA gave these athletes, gave these, these young people freedom. They gave them what they wanted. And what are we seeing? People are taking advantage of what's in front of them, and it's not working out for them. When you give people what they want, you might not like, excuse me, you might not like the results, and they might not like the results. Because there should be rules, there should be parameters, there should be guidelines. It's not always wise to cave to pressure, peer pressure, and to give people what they want. But what is wise, what is good, what is not giving in to peer, peer pressure, what is showing that I am here for the long haul is its mindset Kyle McCord has. Think, this is year two. He's only in year number two, and people are saying, oh, you are you might transfer. I have heard people that cover Ohio State say Kyle McCord might transfer because of how well Devin Brown is playing right now at spring practice. Let that sink in. I forget the publication, the name of the person. Um, I have a couple options of where, my, where I think I hear it, heard it from, but I'm not going to say concretely who. This is year number two. Year Number two, and we're already speculating that Kyle McCord is going to transfer because Devin Brown could throw the football. Please give me a break. The portal is new. Competing is not. That boy knew when he came to Ohio State, he was going to have to compete with the best. That's what he is here to do. Kyle McCord, I like your mindset. I already liked you last year. I like you even more right now. Guys. It's a Friday show. Feel Good Friday. Got the hat on for the Feel Good Friday show. Might start sprinkling in the Cubs hat every now and then when the Cubs win. You might see the Cubs hat make an appearance. You can follow me on Twitter at jstevens07. You can send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. Make sure to come back on Monday of next week. We're going to do a mock draft on Monday. We're going to pick a mock draft and discuss what happens in the first round is it similar, similar to what we talked about last week with Ryan Roberts from Rice and draft scouting? Is it different? Who is Chris Olave kind of competing with for that 16, 18, 20, 22, 25, 27 spot in the first round? What other receivers are there that might take his spot getting picked earlier in the draft and then not? Well, we'll discuss all of that on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. A lot of spring game preparation, an offensive show coming up, a defensive show coming up, just a general spring game preparation um, uh, a show for just preparing for the game next Friday. A lot of good stuff coming, and you want to be subscribed on your favorite podcast listening app. You also want to be subscribed on the YouTube. There will be some YouTube exclusive videos coming very, very soon. You don't want to miss them. Thank you for making Locked On Buckeyes your first to listen every day. Now make your second to listen the Locked On NFL Draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL defensive back Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and available, free and available wherever you get your fine podcasts. It's Friday. It's a feel good Friday. Enjoy the time we have together. And before you know it, we will be in the shoe watching the Buckeyes play in the spring game.